at the Itamar settlement, security is a major concern. But that didn't prevent the brutal murder of five of its residents last March. Johanan Goldin is part of the local civilian rapid response team. He recalls how the intruders broke in through this part of the fence. They entered over here. The hole has been fixed, but you can still see it. They entered this house first. No one was home because the family that lives there was away for the Sabbath. They stayed in it for one hour. They waited for the Fogels to go to sleep and entered their home around 10.15 p.m. Hours later, Rabbi Cohen discovered the bloodbath that the murderers left behind. The mattresses that the five Fogel family members were lying on when they were killed have been discarded. Rabbi Cohen says nothing could have prevented this from happening. The massacre which took place in this house is something which, for now, unfortunately, is intrinsically tied to our life in Israel. It's not something we want, but we can't avoid it. The attack exposed some of the shortcomings of the complex network of systems that are meant to secure Jewish settlements. More than 500,000 Israelis live in East Jerusalem and in the West Bank, on the other side of the internationally recognized borders of 1967. Over two and a half million Palestinians live on this same territory. At Itamar, security begins at the gate of this settlement in the north of the West Bank. It holds more than a thousand inhabitants over some seven square kilometers. Fourteen of its residents have been killed by infiltrators since 2002. Yuri is a private security guard. Contractors like him man the entry points at most of the settlements. They fall under the authority of the Ministry of Defense and are in contact with the army. I have a direct line to the nearby army base and its patrols. I'm also in constant contact with the security coordinator in the settlement. So if anything happens, I can quickly get a lot of men to show up. Yuri tells us that the defense system here has its limits. He was on duty the night that the deadly attack occurred. He tells us that the alarm went off repeatedly when trespassers jumped the fence, but his colleagues failed to report it and to call on the army to intervene. It took our patrol six minutes to show up, but they didn't identify or notice any breaches. The intruders jumped the fence. No one thought that there could be terrorists in the settlement. They jumped the fence and hid. No one was expecting this to happen. Matanya Ben Shetrit is the Israeli army's security coordinator at Itamar. He is in charge of the team of civilian commandos in the settlement and liaises with the army. First of all, the army is in charge of security. We assist with our team of armed civilians. I'm at the head of this civilian rapid response team. We also have a main control room with an alert system for the entire settlement. From there, we monitor the fence thanks to video surveillance. Moments later, as we're interviewing him, Matanya is interrupted by a call. If it's serious, then you should call a bomb disposal unit. So tell me what you think. Okay, all right, I'll come over then. Bye. Matanya has to rush over to the other side of the settlement. One of his team members is telling him that a suspicious package has been found and is updating him about it over the phone. By the time Matanya arrives, Israeli police are already at the scene. So is Yohanan, a member of Itamar's civilian rapid response teams. 
You should go check behind the hill. It's a false alarm. Matanya moves on to go check the surrounding areas. He wants to build a new wall around Itamar. He would also like the army to be more aggressive in defending the settlers. According to him, settlements are the front line between neighboring Palestinian villages and Israel. They help secure the entire land of Israel. We're engaged in a battle against our enemies. They're attacking us on many fronts, in different places. But the Jewish people will not be defeated, not by a terror attack like the one we just had, not by a war, not by any other type of operation. The Israel Defense Forces are a significant actor in the protection of settlements. One of their spokespeople agreed to a short interview on the topic without going into details about what the army does in Judea and Samaria the biblical name that settlers use when referring to the West Bank. The IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, we are in Judea, Samaria, and our main goal is to give security to the people. That's our mission, to stop terrorism, to stop terrorists from infiltrating Israel because of our past, but what we know. We do not do politics. We are the army. Army does not do politics, and we are here to give security. The IDF has a permanent base at the Itamar settlement. This is one of many such facilities that the Israeli army has positioned across the West Bank. A soldier invites us inside without asking us to turn our camera off. According to this young officer, nine men are stationed here 24-7. But this settlement is actually very vulnerable. <laughs> We have way too many missions out here. We're in permanent state of high alert in case anything happens. Anytime we get a call, we send five guys with the car to go check what's going on. We also use our tower right here to scan the surrounding perimeter. It's pretty complicated out here. We have the fence and the alarm system, but honestly, terrorists can break in here easily. If they really want to get to us, they can. We filed a few terror attacks in the past out here. The soldier confirms that his men are supposed to be in constant radio contact with the different teams deployed throughout the settlement, but sometimes things go wrong. You can't blame infiltrations like the last one on the army. They didn't inform the army during the entire infiltration. The alarm went off when the intruders broke in, but no one told us about it. We were asleep. In the end, it's the little girl who went back to her home and found her family members with their throats slit. On another settlement, these young volunteers are learning to rely on no one but themselves in case of an attack on their homes. They're part of Mishmeret Hayesha, which literally means the guard of Judea and Samaria. It's a privately funded paramilitary organization with IDF-issued weapons. This training has made it possible for hundreds of groups of settlers to improve their combat skills. And rather than running and looking for cover, we're trying to get away from whatever is happening, whatever, whatever bad is, is happening. Um, and whatever, whatever is, uh, is about to happen, um, it's their job to do exactly the opposite, quickly go for their weapon and their equipment, and first and foremost, move as quickly as possible in the direction where the gunfire is coming from. Listen up, guys. We're going to teach you to launch an attack in groups of four. We're going to start out with blanks, and then we'll practice live fire. This is an extremely dangerous exercise because most of these youth are not experienced in handling weapons. This is extremely necessary because um, the bottom line is it's proven over the years that um, this, for more than anything else, uh, is a lifesaver. Here's a person who got caught up in the middle of something like this, which is very common. You see the picture of that woman there with her hands up? Here's a woman running down the hallway. You can imagine a scene like this. I've seen it happen, 
where basically a shooting takes place in, the, in, in, a, in a place and uh, everybody's freaking out. And you have all sorts of people that come running out of rooms, running out of buildings. The following day, the young settlers practice in their home in Hebron. Their rooms have replaced the shooting range and their weapons are not loaded. They run around looking for intruders. The instructor has told them that the most critical moments of an infiltration are the very first minutes. The men need to be able to rapidly identify and eliminate the source of threat. Fire, fire, fire! Fire, fire, fire! Fire, fire! He's dead! Fire! He's dead! He's down! Don't go past this door before having put your gun in first, because there might be a gun pointed at you inside the room. So what should I do? Look here, the first guy should stand like this, and you come and back him up. Then you can go in, make sure it's clear, and leave. The Magav are part of Israel's national police. They're in charge of protecting the country's borders. This road separates the Palestinian towns from the Jewish settlements. These officers patrol it day and night in an armored vehicle tailored to meet their needs. If I ever need to shoot while I'm in the vehicle, it's very simple. I can just insert my M16 in this hole. And this allows me to fire in any direction. These officers tell us that protecting this fence is a way of safeguarding their entire country. This fence protects all of Israel. Anyone who breaks through that security fence can get to Jerusalem and all of Israel's Jewish communities. There's no good reason for anyone to breach this fence. For us, anyone caught jumping it is a terrorist who is on his way to commit a terror attack. By ordering their border police to protect settlements, Israeli authorities are sending out a clear message. Their state extends past the borders of 1967. This issue is at the core of the peace process which stalled last September over settlement construction.